Hi and welcome to Rick's Corner. Well, it's about a couple of days before New Year's. We're finishing up the year. This week is kind of a dead week for everybody. There's the businesses are letting out early and people are on the road and it's very quiet in the LA area. I actually went down to Santa Monica for lunch because it was such a nice day. It's 81 degrees here, if you can imagine that, and the sun's out. But I have had, over the years, many people have asked me how I got into bodybuilding and pro wrestling. So let's start with one. Let's start about bodybuilding because that seems to be where everything really began for me and for a lot of you I'm sure it did as well. Um, what happened was I was in high school. I wasn't a big guy. I was probably 145 pounds, around six feet tall. Um, I had gone on a diet just to stay lean, eating orange juice bars every day for lunch at school and not having lunch. Or if that's the case, I'd have a tuna sandwich. I didn't know much about nutrition or anything to do with diet or working out. but. I don't know, I used to read the muscle magazines and I thought, well, it'd be nice to look like that. What would it possibly take? Well, I had a girlfriend that was a year older than me. She was a senior in high school and she was a homecoming queen. She was beautiful, she was on the swim team. Um, she was all around athlete. And I thought, how in the world did I get her? But I did. She lived with her cousins. Two of them were football players on the, on the uh, football team in, big, in high school. And so they worked out in their backyard with the barbecue benches and weights. So they invited me over to work out. So I, oh yeah, I'll have to give this a try. And I did some presses on the bench. And of course the barbecue benches are really wide. So if you lay down to do a bench press, it literally kills your scapulas because it's too wide to do presses on. But very, very weird barbaric type barbells. I mean, it's like the kind you buy on uh, in Sears and you just work out at home. No machines, no anything. Well, I did it uh, for several weeks and I started to see some results. I actually started to make some progress just in the backyard with a barbell and some dumbbells which proves to me you can do it if you want to. Well, she looked at me one day and she says, you're, uh, you're getting lumpy looking. This is all in my book, by the way, if you buy my book. I said, lumpy, uh, what do you mean lumpy? She says, well, you know, muscles. And I said, that's, that's what the whole idea of working out is, right? Well, I don't know if I like it because people are looking at you. And I said, well, so? Well, that means they're not gonna look at me. I said, no, it's just two separate things. You can't, you can't mix uh, oil and water. It's just two separate things. Anyway, she went away to college and I was in my senior year. I was playing guitar in a rock band. I was a good guitarist. We had to deal with Capitol Records and I thought, okay, this is gonna be my future from this point on forever. I love playing music, rock and roll. I love the band, I love the guitar. I like all the things I can do, effects on the guitar that sound cool. And back then you had no effects pedal, so I had to do them by myself and make up certain things, but it was good. So I switched and I went to the YMCA. I had to find a gym to train in. The YMCA, Back in those days, very little equipment. Most of it was broken. I had a pull-down machine that had a cable that the wires were busted out, so every time you do some push-downs, if you stood too close, the wires would cut your stomach. A uh, calf machine that had a long rod with weights laying on it, and so when you would do calves, the rod would swing back and forth and bang you in the shins. The bench press bar was not an Olympic bar. It was a long bar, but was bent from people doing heavy squats and bending the bar, dropping it on the bench. So every time you do benches, the bar would twist on you. It would go this way and this way. But I still managed to get my lift up to 300 pounds and it was a heavy bar. I don't mean by heavy bar, I mean a stiff bar. You know, Olympic bars have a certain amount of spring. This one had none. I worked out every day. I kind of followed a routine as best I knew. I saw in the magazines. My diet was three quarts of milk a day, anything I could eat, burgers, spaghetti, meatballs, you name it. Never got fat. I did put on size. I put on a, quite a bit of size in a short period of time. Um, and I liked what I saw and I would basically do bench presses and deadlifts and squats and then curls and all the other things that went around it. But I got into powerlifting and I thought, well, that might be kind of a fun thing to compete in. And they had powerlifting meets at the YMCA's there and one in Fresno and one in certain places. And I did pretty well, had a pretty good bench squat and deadlift. Um, but it wasn't really what I wanted. I really wanted to shape my body into something. So I incorporated shaping movements that I saw in Joe Weider's magazine, Muscle Builder, back in those days. It wasn't Muscle and Fitness, it was actually called Muscle Builder. Iron Man was another good one, which was basically uh, lifting. It was more of an Olympic style lifting, but they did have bodybuilders in there, so I, I read some routines. Time went on and I'm training every day and I'm still in high school, I'm a senior. My friends are going out and partying on the weekend and I, why are you working out, Rick? You know, that's just gonna turn to fat one day. You know, muscle turns to fat, which we all know it doesn't. But that was what they wanted to think. There was a certain envy of the fact that I would take the time to go to the gym every day after school, regardless of anything, and work out. And then if I played on the band on Friday and Saturday, that's what I did, but I still got my workouts in because I knew I wanted to do it. Well, after about a year or two of that, I switched to another gym. I went to work for another gym up there. It was a health club. It was a nice place, all the chrome weights, like a pulley palace. And 
Um, the owner asked me to put everybody on a routine that joined the gym, two sets of certain exercises. It was, it was actually a card. It had a routine he gave to everybody. I said, look, um, Joe, his name is Joseph. I said, you can't give everybody the same routine. This guy had a good body too. You know, just as well as I do, you can't give everybody the same routine. You can, a doctor doesn't give everybody the same medicine. They're not gonna make any progress on two sets of this for the rest of their life. I wanna change it up. He said, no, I don't change it up. This is what they get. Well, when he wasn't looking, I changed it up and I got people routines that they got results because they're gonna pay their money, they're gonna ask me questions. I'm gonna get them results and this is what it's all about, giving to others. All right, so I trained and then all of a sudden a contest came up. I think it was a Mr. Central California in Fresno and I took second, I entered that and I thought, well, bodybuilding's kind of cool, I like it. Um, at that time, my father, uh, I was 18, my father had passed away and he uh, always would write me from the hospital before surgery saying he wanted me to get him in shape when he got out of the hospital but he never made it home. And I lived with my mom and my grandmother and they both looked at me, why are you going to a gym and killing yourself? And I said, no, it gets worse than that, mom. I think I'm gonna become a professional wrestler. Two wrestlers came to the gym on a Thursday, were wrestling in town, I talked to them about it. They said, go down to the Olympic Auditorium, talk to Mae Young, she was the world's weight, uh, heavyweight weight champion at the time, and she can train you. I went down to see her. I'm not gonna get off on the wrestling thing, but this is just one thing I did. She took a look at me, she says, we have no bodybuilders in wrestling to speak of. You are gonna make a fortune. I wanna manage you and I'll train you, which she did. So I went down every day. I drove what, two hours to LA from Bakersfield, two hours home, trained in the ring for three hours and went back to the gym for another two. It was very, very grueling and tiring, but I liked it. All right, shortly after that in 1969, I took a job with Kellogg Cereal to get out of Bakersfield, which is a small little town which offered me no future in anything I ever wanted to do. So I moved to Torrance, I worked for Kellogg's, I trained at Bill Pearl's gym in Inglewood. Bill Pearl's gym was in the middle of the hood. It was a lot of homemade equipment, but Bill Pearl was a champion. I always looked up to him. I had my best workouts in that gym at the time. It was unbelievable. The middle of uh, Inglewood is not a great area, but I went. After about a year, I quit my job, and someone said, you need to go to Gold in Venice. I said, I have no idea where that is. Never heard of it. I used to go to Santa Monica all the time, but I never knew of a Gold's gym. So I drove over there, and this is where I ran into Arnold at the time, and Draper, and all those guys, and I said, okay, this is where I'm going. I moved to Santa Monica. You guys are gonna die when you hear this. I got an apartment on Wilshire and 10th. If anybody knows downtown Santa Monica, this is 10 blocks off the beach on the main boulevard where all the businesses, everything is, for 135 a month. You just can't get rent like that today. I met the guys, I started training at Goals, I became friends with them. Arnold would come by about eight in the morning, honk his horn, we'd go to Zookie's Deli and eat, go to the gym and train. And I didn't have a job at the time. I collected unemployment from my past job. But then all of a sudden we got offered a commercial for Chevrolet called Heavy Chevy. Arnold, myself, Steve Marginian, uh, Jim Morris, a bunch of guys, I got a thousand bucks. I was able to join Screen Actors Guild and get an agent which got me more work. So now all of a sudden bodybuilding is paying off for me. I'm starting to get jobs. And this is what I really wanted. I, hadn't, I didn't have a plan that that was gonna happen, but it happened. So uh, I was able to go to the gym in the morning at Gold's work out, lay on the beach in the afternoon or have a, an audition for a commercial or a film, and then leave around four o'clock and go to one of the towns nearby and wrestle for 35 or 40 bucks, which was a lot of money back then, five, six nights a week. So I was making money wrestling, I was making money off residuals, and when I wasn't getting TV residuals, I was collecting unemployment, which is legal, because you can do one or the other. Had it not been for bodybuilding, I probably would have never left Bakersfield who knows what I would have done. I probably would have married the ugliest girl in town and had ugly kids. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I would never do that. But you don't, know what the, you don't know the road that you don't take in life where it's gonna go. You, know, you only know what you're gonna do once you do. Well, the commitment to bodybuilding, the discipline that it takes, and the mindset I, I used for other things. Like uh, I started the t-shirt business after doing the Gold's Gym logo. I said, I'm gonna draw some designs. I'm gonna put an ad in Joe Weider's magazine. He asked me to do it. I'm gonna have a mail order business and it made a lot of money. I printed the shirts in my garage, I built my own equipment, I shipped it out, I kept up with it for years and it was a good business but it got very tiring after a while, just printing and shipping and printing and shipping, doing auditions, doing commercials, wrestling at night. I mean, I was going around the clock. Um, but that's pretty much how I got into bodybuilding and uh, to this day, it was 40 years later, I'm still training every day. I've had a numerous injuries from wrestling as most of you know. I was in the hospital for a minute with something I didn't expect. But the discipline from bodybuilding and what I learned from it over the years has opened doors for me everywhere. I can go out in town now, like my girlfriend says, and she says, everybody knows you. They see you on TV, they see you in bodybuilding, they see you in wrestling, they see you from Rick's Corner. 
literally I get stopped everywhere I go in this city, and this is a big city. I can be in a restaurant 60 miles north of here, and some waiter will come, hey, I watch your show. I mean, this is how much it's opened up. Had not been for bodybuilding, that may never have ever happened. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I hadn't gone into wrestling. Maybe I wouldn't have done acting. Maybe I would have sold cars in Bakersfield, but I can't imagine myself doing that. The bodybuilding has been the key for me, and it's not about being big. It's not about being tough. It's not about being, look at my bicep. It's not about flexing the tricep like some of these guys do today. They, they take a pose and there's no, no person. I just look at my arm. It was about opening doors and being in front of the people and having a nice body that they like. That when you put you on a show, you get along with people, you compliment them, you're nice, you, 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 you use your body as your selling tool, but then the brain kicks in and you gotta be really intelligent and nice to them. So you build your brain along with your body. And the two together seem to work, and that's where I am now. And this is why I have a book coming out of my life called The Time of My Life. You can get it. It's in Kindle form on Amazon. It's Google. It's iTunes. It's Barnes & Noble. It tells the whole story from start to finish with a ton of pictures. And that's not why I'm doing this video, but uh, I finally got a publisher, and he put it out for me. So I'd love to hear how you guys got into bodybuilding and why. And I'll tell you another thing. I had gone into the Army for a brief time, and I never stopped training when I was in the Army. I went to the gym there as well. Even though we had basic training and all that, I figured it in somehow. It's not that I was addicted, it's just that I know that discipline pays off. And the discipline of bodybuilding will pay off for you as well as me. If you use it in a certain way, in a positive way, and have a routine and have a regimen that you know every day you're doing something because it's a positive movement from the learning from bodybuilding, you'll be successful. It, it, can't, it cannot fail you. It just cannot fail you. Every time I go on to a new venture or a business venture and I do something, I use the discipline I used in bodybuilding, I stick to it, I stay on it, I work with people, I stay in touch with people, I make sure that I get my name out there, I make sure that they return my calls and texts and emails that they want to do business properly, and it just snowballs from there. So that's how that goes. If you want more, it's in my book, like I said. Um, I touched on it, and then I will talk a little bit more about how I got into pro wrestling, what it was like on the road with all the other wrestlers and the characters. Now in bodybuilding, like I said in one of my videos, going into Gold's Gym was a whole new world for me. And not only that, Joe was a wonderful guy. He took care of his friends. They had a whole other group of guys working out there that I'd never met before, but they were all friendly. Everybody had their own personality. Even in, in, when you look at the bodybuilders like Zane, Draper, Columbo, Arnold, and those guys today, their bodies were tremendous, and they had the best shape ever compared to the guys today. The guys are huge, but they didn't look like that. So I learned how to train. I learned how to eat. I learned how to get my body in top shape um, by diet. Diet was the biggest key, of course, and then, of course, the workouts as well. And I'm not talking drugs either, because then we were doing liver pills, we were doing aminos, and we were doing uh, basic foods, and that's really what got me into shape. Someone says, how'd you get your waist so small? How much cardio? There was no cardio. I didn't know anything about cardio. All I know is don't eat sugar, don't eat carbs, and that's what I did. So when you see those bodies back then and all of us together, that's pretty much what it was. And now when I look back on that, on those days in the 70s, I'm very thankful that I was part of that group. I was part of Gold's Gym. I was able to do the logo for Gold's, which is the largest logo in the world. That time I didn't do it. I did I didn't know it was going to be the biggest thing ever. I just did it. No idea where it was going to go. So all that from bodybuilding, and here I am now sharing with you, and I'll share more as time goes on. If there are any stories you'd like to hear, please comment and let me know, and I will do it. In the meantime, this is my last show for the year. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, and uh, if I can get out of going out until midnight, I'm staying home. <laughs> Thanks for watching Rick's Corner, and we'll see you after the first of the year.
Drayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.